Okay, uh, where was I? So now we have our geometry being brought in dynamically into Ecotech, and we can start to implement our analysis. So to do the installation analysis, there's a node called um, uh, EcoSolCal. You can bring it here. You see it has a ton of these parameters, and don't let this scare you. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. If you hover over them, they actually tell you exactly what this is. And this will basically coordinate to the inputs that you have to specify to do the solar analysis calculation in Ecotech. So I don't recommend doing this on your own. It's much more straightforward. Actually, just do it within um, within Grasshopper. But you can actually see what all these inputs are. If you go to Calculate Solar Access Analysis in Ecotech, there are these um, wizards that step you through everything you have to specify to do the solar installation analysis. And these same options are present here. So you can see that it's actually Gecko not only lets you interface with, with uh, Ecotech, it actually makes it easier because you can set these right here instead of going through all those wizards. All right, so to get this going, again, we want to do this kind of chaining. So then one thing executes uh, after another. And here it becomes really important because we don't want the installation analysis to happen before the geometry is brought in. So this is where this daisy chaining um, idea comes in really handy. Um, I'm going to turn this to false for now so it doesn't calculate. The calculations of the installation are actually pretty um, computationally intensive. So we don't want this executing every time we make changes. So I'm going to turn this off for now. Um, and to link these together, I'm just going to connect the export done node uh, output to the execute input. And this will chain them together so that installation will start executing as soon as the export mesh is complete. Um, for the weather data, we're going to bring in our weather file from the sun analysis. So this is just specifying our location in New York City. And then there's a series of these inputs. Again, most of these we can keep as default. Um, the one, uh, the few of these are, are more important than others. Um, accumulations is pretty important. It gives you diff access to different kinds of analysis. You can do cumulative over the whole year, or you can do peak intensity. Um, so that just depends on what kind of analysis you want to do. The other important parameter is the sky subdivisions. This is the um, resolution of the analysis. And basically, the lower the number is, the faster it'll go. And the higher it is, the more accurate it will be. It defaults to 15. We can keep that for now. Um, but we're just going to make it into a parameter so we can change it later and see the effect on both calculation times and accuracy. Okay, so once we have uh, this hooked up, um, you can take a look at these other parameters and play around with them. They basically have to do with all those options of uh, installation analysis in the context. Okay, so now uh, once we have that set up, you can hit uh, true. You can see it's taking a while now, it's stuck. And what it did is export the mesh, which was really fast. And now it's actually doing that installation analysis. And if we hover over our active session of Ecotech, you can see it's actually calculating that installation. And here's the result in Ecotech, right? So it's done the calculations, displaying it in Ecotech. Nothing yet in Grasshopper. And uh, because we actually have to bring that geometry from Ecotech back in Grasshopper. Um, so to do that, we have what's called an object request. Uh, so it's a node here uh, under Gecko, uh, eco object request. So this has the same exact chaining idea. Um, once installation is done, we basically trigger object request and it'll pull in uh, the analysis information from Ecotect. Here under A, it has some options about what kind of information we want to bring in. In this case, we're going to bring in the total uh, radiation. We can also specify the radiation. And this will change based on what Ecotech, what's available in Ecotech, but we can only bring in one kind of analysis at a time. So we'll keep this at the default of one. And this I will specify the indices of the faces of the mesh that we want to bring in information for. In this case, we only have one object, so we just want to bring in all of the mesh faces, all the indices. But if we have more than one object, say we have our building and then we have the whole site, we only maybe want to bring in the results for just our building. And this will let us bring in, selectively bring in uh, only certain geometries. For now, um, 
all of our geometry was uh, exported here, and this I output actually kept track of the indices of all the faces exported. So we can plug this side directly into this I, and this is uh, kind of guaranteed to bring in exactly the geometry that was exported before. Um, if we have different types of geometries, you can uh, chain together a few of these exports, export all the geometry separately. It's kind of like, uh, you can think about it like exporting at different layers. And then the one you want, you can just plug in the eye into the eye here. Okay, so now we have all the results here. It's still not visualizing, uh, but it's giving us a lot of really useful information. For instance, it gives us the minimum insulation, the maximum insulation. This min max will relate to this. So whatever this is, it'll be the minimum and maximum. It's also giving us the color information directly from Ecotech. So all these colors that are specified in Ecotech um, are coming out for each face through this RGB component. And also the actual values of insulation are coming out through the values. So we can visualize with color, but we can also use some of the techniques we looked at um, last week where we can output the actual values into, um, into the model. So for now, I'm just going to use the color um, to visualize this. Uh, to do that, I'll use the mesh color, mesh colors component. This will look for a mesh and for a range of colors. Um, by default, it can take in a range of colors and create these gradients on the mesh face. So it's not exactly what we want. So what we actually want to do is since we have a color component for each face, we want to first break apart our uh, building mesh into all its different faces. So for that, we'll use a, um, a mesh explode component. So if we plug in our mesh into a mesh explode, it'll just explode the mesh into um, its constituent faces. Um, we actually want to, because we imported this uh, triangle, triangulated mesh, we actually want to plug in um, the triangulated mesh into this. So now we have 420 faces. Um, we'll plug all of those faces into the mesh colors component. By default, each face gets colored with a gradient specified by these eight colors. This is kind of the default use. So what we want to do is actually specify one color for each face. And to do that, we just plug in the RGB into the color. Um, and because we want one mesh to go with one color, we just have to graft all of these up in the data structure. Okay, because by default, the color will take a, a, a range or pattern of colors and, and create a gradient and apply that to each face. Here we want one face to one color. So if we graph them up, they'll coordinate one to one with each other. Okay, and that's it. So basically, um, we output the triangulated mesh, calculated the insulation, and then brought the colors back and re-coordinated them with the original mesh. So now that we have that, um, we can makes some changes to the geometry or to these different parameters and see how it affects our insulation calculations. So one thing we can do is actually increase the resolution of the mesh. So here we can do uh, two faces per floor and we have to wait a while. Here you can see that's calculating the radiation. The more you increase the geometry, obviously the longer the calculation will take, um, but you'll get more accurate results. So once that finishes, you can see it's brought it back into our grasshopper environment. Um, so this is all dynamic. Anytime we make a change, it recalculates and puts it back into our environment. So all of this is pretty easy. You just want to keep an eye out for what resolution you're doing things in just to make sure you don't bog it down too much. Um, in this case, again, the lock comes in really handy. If you have this analysis, you want to change a few parameters at one time. Um, you can lock the whole interface and, and change things and then uh, re-execute grasshopper. You can also just turn this off, and this will keep Ecotech from executing and make whatever changes you want. So in this case, I'm actually going to increase the, the resolution of the sky for the analysis to try to get some, a bit more accurate results. And now I'm going to click true again, and this will basically recalculate our analysis and give us back the results.